you, everyone. Um, we're very glad each and every one of you is in this room. Um, I lost count, but I know, and I'll check it later, but clearly at over 15 different parish names and locations did I hear just in those introductions. So even that does my heart good to know the, the representation so far and wide around this diocese that are in this room right now. With that said, I'm finally going to let Megan <laughs> teach you many good things. So Megan, if you will, please give, uh, join me in giving her a warm welcome. Testing. Is it working? Okay. <laughs> Hi, this has been wonderful already, and I've already learned so much from all of you, and your passion and your spirit for including our individuals with exceptionalities is just awe-inspiring. And so there's a lot of goals for today, and a lot of goals that I'm hearing from everyone sitting here, and so I do want questions to be asked in the moment so we can brainstorm, and our goal is for you to be here and have something to do on Sunday that will help, or to, for your next religious education class, that there's something that you could physically do to help at least one individual or one family feel more included within your parish, either through Mass. Father and I had a great conversation today at lunch um, as well about, um, I don't want to call it the cry room, we were talking about the peace room or the calm room and how we can maybe incorporate some of these strategies into that area for more um, activity within the uh, mass. So I'm just going to do a brief introduction of myself. Um, I have a degree in early childhood education as well as rec outdoor recreation management. I am trained in applied behavioral analysis. I am not a BCBA, but I have been doing ABA um, for a long time. <laughs> I'm trained in positive behavior supports conscious discipline, as well as love and logic. And so uh, my approach is always uh, on the positive and looking at our individuals with exceptionalities, strength-based and not weakness-based. And I think when we come to that with our hearts as well as our minds and our strategies, we're going to receive that goodness back and that grace back when we treat our individuals with grace and dignity. So. We were talking, and I heard a lot of talking about behavior. And that's, you know, maybe that's the naughty kid, or that's the kid that never stops talking. And there's a lot of different functions of behavior. Number one, when we're looking into catechism, or we know we have parents here. I'm also a parent of a son who is not neurotypical. Uh, he has ADHD. Um, so I also walk this in my personal life as well as my professional life. Oh, I never even said what I do professionally. I am an autism teacher in HISD, um, and that is my specialty. And it's a self-contained classroom um, where we also have been encouraging reverse inclusion as well as inclusion. And I think reverse inclusion would be another way to talk about inclusivity within religious education. So there are, are four main functions of behavior, social attention, task avoidance, gaining a tangible item, and sensory stimulation. Now we could have a whole nother thing on social attention, a whole nother thing on task avoidance, and everything else. But today we're going to really talk about sensory integration. And part of this sensory integration is teaching replacement behaviors. There's, behavior is communication. So when we see a behavior, there's a something that that individual is trying to communicate if they know it or not. So I really want to think about that while we're moving forward. There are many different sensory profiles within the menu of our needs for sensory. There's auditory, how we hear. And if you want to get an example, those annoying fluorescent lights, some people can hear them, some people can't, that humming, some people can have the TV on and the radio on and hear both. If you're like me, I'll go batty. There's tactile and touching. So, you know, our really soft materials or really rough materials. I was supporting an adult individual um, 
on a recreation experience, and she was deaf and blind. And we went to the San Juan Islands on a boat ride, because she wanted to take a ferry ride. Sensory. Her whole life is sensory if she's deaf and blind. And her two, her three favorite things, taking a bath, going on boat rides, and shopping. She was able to get that tactile experience. She was also phenomenal. Side note, she was able to tell the color of a, te of a texture by touch. So we would be in Marshalls, and there'd be four different shirts of the same color, and she would touch and sign black. And she had it spot on. Phenomenal, phenomenal woman who was also educated at the Helen Keller School. She's oral. We got our pencil biters. We've got our Twizzler chewers. We've got our ice biters. <laughs> All oral input. And this is something that, as adults, that we walk life through life with. Visual, obviously, paintings, scenery, landscape, but also how we present material on a piece of paper. Is there enough white space? Is it too overwhelming? What's the font? How many pictorial representations do you have embedded within? So there are lots of aspects of visual sensory integration when we're talking about instruction and accessing our environment. Smell and taste are connected. You can walk into, you know, someone's, you know when someone is making broccoli. <laughs> Some people are fine with it. No one likes the colleague who brings tuna fish or leftover fish the next day for lunch. Those are sensory issues that we experience as adults that we want to be aware of when we're creating a conducive spiritual environment for our individuals with exceptionalities. And then there's the proprioceptive body awareness. We've got our toe tappers. We've got our knuckle crackers. We've got our jumpers, our stimmers, and all of this has a function. And so while we might be teaching or experiencing mass, we can see that there, our individuals may not be aware of the behaviors that they're displaying based on their sensory profile and their sensory needs. So these are aspects that we want to always consider while we're walking our path of faith and incorporating everyone in to service. So I'm just, there's a lot of text. We talk, a lot of people are talking about ADHD and autism. And I did want to give an overview for people who may not have experience in the definitions and functional definitions of ADD and ADHD. And those are two very different diagnoses. And I am not a pediatrician. I'm not a psychologist. I'm just giving you an overview. Some of the major things with ADD and ADHD, there's going to be an inattentiveness. And sometimes that looks just staring out, out of the window. Sometimes it's doodling and looking disrespectful. Then there's the hyperactivity, which we could all probably close our eyes. Think about a group of kids and be like, oh, ADHD, or that hyperactivity, the inability to sit. And we're going to connect that with the proprioceptive need. And then the impulsivity. And that impulsivity can look like not being kind, cutting in line, not raising their hand. And while other people might look at that as being rude and disrespectful, it is a cognitive function that we have to teach a replacement behavior for and also accommodate in our environments and catechism. So I am having a little, I'm gonna have to decrease the slide for a moment. And I do have an ADHD simulation to put up.
many, so much input is being received at one time with our individuals with ADHD. And in order, that's going through our brain, their brains, while they're listening to Father Tom and Mash. <laughs> or trying to attend during religious education. And so that's one of the purposes of this training is to how can we help them regulate these sensory needs. Autism spectrum disorder, something that's been brought up a lot, and it is, April is autism awareness, or as I also like to say, autism acceptance. There's a difference between moving forward with awareness and accepting. We're not here to change our individuals. We're here to accommodate and celebrate our individuals. So some common, there's a quote out there in the autism world. If you've met one student individual with autism, you've met one student with autism. And we cannot make generalizations on any of our individuals on how they interact with life based on their diagnoses, just like all of us. There can be ongoing social problems that include difficulty communicating and interacting with others. There could be repetitive behaviors, as well as limited interests or activities. On the flip side to that, there could be a very increased targeted interest um, where our individuals will be experts. Symptoms are typically recognized within the first two years of life, hopefully. Later on, early intervention is key. I know we have a lot of early educators and educate in elementary age, which is great, but it does have to be carried over throughout our lives. And then symptoms that hurt the individual ability to function socially at school, life, or other areas, such as being active members in their religious communities. and I just get too much information. So I think that video is very powerful. When we look at our students or parishioners who we think have a meltdown, so many things have gone into their moments leading up to what we call a meltdown or a behavioral incident that we don't see as a stressor. And so that's one of the purposes of this training, so we can acknowledge and get some information, but also have some materials to help our students and sometimes ourselves on how to regulate. Yes, ma'am. Typically, that individual will carry a similar sensory profile throughout their path. However, not all the time. If I if I'm teaching and I'm and as 
we started in the beginning, it's all about relationship. It's all about kindness and dignity. If I see a student starting to rock, starting to rock, I'm going to walk over. I see you really stressed out. Why don't you try this for a minute? And then I'm going to keep on my instruction. I call it talk and turn. You're not giving attention to the behavior. You're offering a replacement behavior. And it's not affecting the instruction of the other students. Let's say ball doesn't work. Kind of keep using it. Yeah. Yeah. Or let's say, don't want it. I see you need a little bit more movement. Can you go to the trampoline and jump 10 times? Walk away. <laughs> so that way you're also, when we're talking about the functions of behavior, you're also ruling out if it's attention seeking. And you're also avoiding the power conflict. I'm going to tell you as a special educator, as a parent, power struggles you will never win. That is the moment where we can teach grace, self-composure, and self-regulation. And that's the most important time when we're also trying to teach our individuals with exceptionalities, with dignity, and we're also role modeling for their peers how to treat our individuals with exceptionalities, with grace and kindness as well. So we're going to have a little table talk. What resonated you with you from the videos? What can you identify with some of the needs? And in your capacity, how do you think you can support individuals in receiving accommodations within your parish? We're going to get more there. But just from what I front loaded here, I would like for you to talk at your tables about the information that you just received. And I am going to use the timer. This is another very effective instructional use. Because sometimes with our students with exceptionalities, time is unending. And not everyone knows that it's after one Sid the Science Kid or Daniel Tiger. So when there's a visual expectation of how long they do have to attend, it's super helpful. As an educator, I use these when I'm teaching, and I should have been using it now. Every 10 minutes, I'm usually like, OK, let's stop and take a micro break. And a micro break might be moving your fingers, wiggling your ears, doing toe stretches. Then you can also do a macro break, where you're getting everyone to get up and do three jumping jacks, or a couple wall push-ups. And that's something that can be integrated for everyone and not our, just our individuals with exceptionalities. The timer has begun, and go. <laughs>